Well, good evening to you. Amber just put up a, another video about uh, 15 minutes ago, and she wants you to stop telling her who she is, even though she puts her whole life out there. I'm going to shut that door before my cat runs in. <laughs> uh, one of these days, I'm going to bring my duck in here and let you see my pet duck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have I have like a little farm going on out there. I have some uh, a, a pretty good garden, a couple of fig trees. I live in the suburbs, so I'm I'm can have a few animals like goats and ducks, and you know have a dog, cat, and some ducks. We may get a donkey, who knows? But <laughs> anyway, um, just trying to keep the animals out of here while I'm recording. So I got me some new ears. So w both both ears can be heard out of. So, Amber wants us to stop telling her who she is, even though she puts her whole life out there for us to judge. She knows what she's doing. I, I feel bad for her because, I mean, I, I don't know what goes on behind the camera, but she feels like she has to, you know, put things out here for the clicks, for the views. And, I mean, I don't know. I just, I just, I wish she had more respect for herself than what she just pulled yesterday. So this is a almost a 20 minute video. So let's follow the white rabbit. Hey guys. So I hate to comment on my appearance in this sort of video because this video is serious in my opinion. It's just something that needs to be said. Okay, my appearance ain't too well either. I mean, I just got in from doing a lot of yard work. I we didn't mow, and so. I'm not looking fresh faced right now, <laughs> but I can see myself through the camera, obviously. And I look kind of weird, kind of wild. We know. I feel like with this outfit, if I had makeup on, it would definitely make it complete. But I just threw this on real quick so I could film for you guys because this is important and I feel like it needs to be said. And I know a lot of people comment on my scars. Yeah, um, yeah. So this was a cat scratch or a dog scratch. I don't remember. Majority of the majority of these are like the long ones, and then these are usually also from like a dog or a cat or something. But mosquitoes also love my blood type. So every time that I get any sort of wound on me, I will itch and itch and itch it, and then. Once it has a scab, I will repeatedly pick it over and over and over. I can't control it half the time. So then it takes forever to heal because I won't let it heal because I'll continuously pick the scab. Put a band-aid on it and some Neosporin. Which makes it bigger, 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 infected, worse, worse, worse. And then I get a scar. <clears throat> it's not cute. It's not fun. It's not fresh. I hate that part of me. But I just wanted to mention that. I guess it's one of those things. Mention it before someone else does. Because I can already see the comments. Yeah, um, I get it too. I'm, my arm is all banged and bruised up because, like I say, I got ducks. It's mating season. And my male continually bites me. And he bites me hard because either A, he thinks I'm one of his girls. Or B, he thinks I'm after one of his girls. But... What this video about is about is binge eating. Um, I kind of want to talk about a few times when I was younger when I noticed that I was eating more than I should and doing things with food that I shouldn't be doing that just didn't seem right. And I want to talk about the fact that people don't think that I binge because I plan it. I don't always plan it. That's where there's some confusion. So I do want to start off with a few instances when I was younger. So first one is, this is when it was like pivotal where it really started getting bad. When I was about nine, 10 years old, I was in an all girls group home and all of our meals were planned. All of our snacks were planned. We didn't get to choose when we ate. We didn't get to choose what to eat. It was all just planned for us. I would think that would be, you know, something that would integrate into your later life. I have a good friend. She was, <laughs> man, I pause her at the worst minutes. I'm sorry, hon. Um, but she was at an all, all, sorry, all girls cabin and she lived at a home for girls. But Bethel Bible Village, I believe is what it was called. And, you know, she, 
for the most part, it was positive for her. However, you know, anything that she got, she, she developed hoarding because of it, because anything she got that, you know, they said was hers that she could have forever. Other girls would take it. Other girls would steal it. And she even did this with food. Whenever she'd get food or candy or something, she would hide it. Uh, she didn't really develop an eating disorder, but she did develop hoarding mentalities. And she's, you know, trying to work past that because even something as insignificant as a gum wrapper is hard for her to part with because she feels an emotional attachment to everything that she comes in possession with. And she really has to watch herself because, you know, like I said, it, it was something rooted in there. But she's she's working through it. She's doing good. And I remember... There were times where if there were no one in the kitchen and everyone was busy doing something like the staff or the other girls that I was living with, I would steal little like granola bars or fruit roll-ups. Like it didn't matter. Something quick and easy and ready to just stick in my pocket or stick in a bag I was carrying. And there were three bathrooms in the group home. And one of the bathrooms had this little cabinet where you could lift up the bottom of it and there was like this hole, this like empty space where I would hide the wrappers at. <laughs> so I would steal the food, I would go to the bathroom, I would eat it and I would devour it really fast and then I would hide the wrappings. Um, I remember also, I was at the group home, I guess this is when it really started, my binge eating. I did Girl Scouts and how Girl Scouts was back then was you would have someone order the cookies or whatever it was that they were ordering and you wouldn't give it to them then. You would have to put in the order, then you receive the cookies, then you give it to the person. That That's the way it still goes now, but I do think they order some to stand outside of grocery stores to, to sell. But I, I get the wrapper thing. <laughs> When you're that young, you don't you don't think anybody's going to find out. And someday, somewhere, somehow, somebody's going to move that cabinet and they're going to find everything and you're going to have to answer for it or somebody's going to have to answer for it. And I get that. There was like um, a hole in our wall in the bathroom that I just, I guess, I didn't think anybody was, you know, ever going to move that wall or tear down that wall. And I would put, you know, stuff I didn't like to eat in the hole. And number one, it starts stinking. <laughs> so I totally 100% get that. You don't think anybody's going to, you know, check under there. And you you can't see past tomorrow when you're that young. So I, I totally get that, girl. So I remember this like it was yesterday. I had an order that someone ordered. It was peanut brittle. It was a pretty big thing of peanut brittle. And I remember I was not wanting to, I think it was a teacher actually, who I was supposed to give it to. I was not wanting to give it to them. I was like making excuses. I was a good Girl Scout, okay? Sorry for the jump cuts, I'm cutting out ads. I sold a lot of cookies. I gave all the cookies to them. So I'm just saying this was one instance where I'm like, whoa, I look at it now and I'm just like, yikes. So, um, long story short, I did not give the brittle to the teacher. She never asked about it or anything, which I thought was really weird. What I did do with it though, was one day I was supposed to be showering, but what I did was I turned the shower on, I closed the door, so the staff thought I was showering, but I was actually in my room, in the closet, hiding, eating the whole thing of peanut brittle. I'll be honest, peanut brittle is okay. It's not even that great. And as a 10 year old to eat that much peanut brittle in one time. Now that right there was a binge that, you know, something you really don't like, but it's there and you go for it. That's a binge. Yeah. So that's how I noticed that the binging was starting. I always waited till I was alone by myself, but it's like, I knew I was going to do it. And that's where... I kind of want to talk to you guys about planned binging. So I do have a lot of stories about instances where I have binged so bad to literally sickness and I still continue to binge. Maybe I could share those in a future video, but I just really wanted this video to be focused on the first time I noticed I had a problem and now the planned binges. A lot of people think that you cannot plan a binge. That is false information. 
I'm sorry, but you cannot tell someone that they're not binging versus if they are binging. You guys do not know me. This wasn't just, you know, going out and buying food in secret and, and you know, sneaking it home. I, I can get that. If you stop at the store and then, you know, you're hungry and you, you're wanting to binge and you grab some stuff and you hurry home with it and sneak it to your room, that's one thing. But you don't, you don't have a vehicle. You don't have... I mean, you have a vehicle, but you have to have somebody drive you there. You have to knowingly, you know, or order it, order it through your Instacart or however you order your food. You knowingly do that. First, you either ask somebody to give you a ride or you go to your Instacart and put it in your cart. And... Then not only did you do that conscious effort of it, you also did it on camera and you told us what you're going to do. It's, it's not like that. It's not like you just snuck home with it and snuck it to your room before anybody saw you and you were going to mow down on it. And, you know, hopefully nobody will never know. Okay, I get that halfway when you're at the store and, you know, you sneak around the aisles so nobody sees you pick up the peanut butter M&M's. That's one of my weaknesses. I love peanut butter M&M's. And I can devour a whole bag, but I don't do it when somebody sees me do it and they, they don't even know I've bought it. And and I do it in secret. But, you know, you had to act actively ask somebody for a ride or put it in your Instacart and then you also put it on camera. You even told us before you're going to do it. I'm sorry, but those three things combined together does not equal a binge to me. That's, you know, that to me equaled, I need money. I need some clicks. I need some views. So, I mean, I, I really personally, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist. But those three factors together, three majorly conscious factors together, you know, you actively, I'm saying it again, you actively asked somebody to give you a ride or you went to Instacart. You actively told us what you were going to do on the video and you actively did it on camera. Those, those three things. I mean, I could come halfway with you going to the store and sneaking it in your cart and checking out with it. Hopefully your roommates or, or your partner doesn't see it, but I'm, I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> You guys do not see how I am. You guys do not see me when I'm ambiging. You guys don't know my thought process. You don't know anything regarding that. You let us into that thought process. That's what you said you were doing. You said, I'm letting you into my thought process. So I try my hardest to share certain parts of it, but you guys don't know everything. And But you say you want us to know everything. There are a lot of people who watch me who do binge. There are a lot of people who watch me who have different types of eating disorders that are the opposite of mine. But we Also, Chick, you've, you've had three ads within six minutes. Come on now. Relate to each other. I have met so many wonderful people via personal messages, like private messages. I don't know why I said personal. What the heck am I talking about? Private messages on Instagram, which is the main source where I've met these people. Where you guys open up to me about your disorders and you relate to me. There are people who binge, there are people who restrict really bad, but I'm gonna be talking about binging and how there are so many of you who relate to me in the sense of you also plan binges. There is another YouTuber that I adore who is a weight loss channel that I'm not gonna be mentioning any names because I'm kind of done doing that. Um, they have successfully, I wouldn't say beat their binge eating disorder, but they have conquered it in a way that I wish I could. And they talk a lot about how a lot of their binges were planned. So when I binge, I like to do it alone or near Becky. And it wasn't like that in the beginning. I could tell you that much. I didn't like to be around anybody. But since I've grown older, I always do it around my girlfriend once I get comfortable around them. And I know it's like, it's weird to share and it's not comfortable. How do I explain this? Like, I'm comfortable. I hear footsteps up in her video. Around my partner doing that, but it's also very uncomfortable. Like I feel ashamed and stuff like that. And um, 
since I prefer to do it alone and I prefer to do it in my bedroom, I don't think I've ever binged in the living room. I've never binged in the dining room. I've never binged in the den. It's always, it's always my room. It's always in the same spot and I'm always doing the same exact thing. I am binging super hard while watching a TV show, YouTube, doesn't even matter. And so you binge while you binge. Binge eat while you binge watch. Okay, I get it. And it's a fast paced binge. I eat really fast, large quantities of food. Sometimes I don't even realize how much I've ate till it's... By the way, that was ad number four. Gone until I see the wrappers and things like that. And subconsciously, a lot of, a lot of people binge in private. And if people did not binge in private, if they just binged whenever they felt like binging, then they would be binging in front of friends, in front of family, wherever they want to binge, they'd just be binging. I've never binged in a restaurant, never binged at a friend's house, ever. It's always in my room. That's been how it's been for the last 10 years. It's always in my room. And obviously, to create that plan, I have to be sitting there in the middle of the day or right before I'm about to go to a grocery store and I'm like, I'm gonna buy all the foods I'm gonna be binging on tonight in my bedroom. So subconsciously, people are planning their binges because they do do it alone. And don't get me wrong, I wanna say about 60% of the time it is not planned. It just comes with a full force that you cannot control it, but you also can't control it when it's planned because once you have your mind set on that binge, you are ready for that high. And I think that's- Somebody just opened up a Coca-Cola, that scared me. Where it's also hard for me to explain because it's not only do I binge eat, but soft I'm drink. a food addict. <laughs> and by being a food addict, I want that high. I'm addicted to what food makes me feel like. I'm addicted to how it makes me numb, but it makes me feel good while I'm eating it. And I think that's another reason why plan binges. Also, there's a fine line between, am I just planning for my next high versus am I planning for my next binge? For me, because I've been in my body for almost 30 years, <laughs> I've been struggling with this for my whole freaking life. And we want to see the next 30 years. We don't want you to expire early. It's just when I was 10, I finally realized something wasn't right because I didn't know of anyone else sneaking food, eating so much food that I couldn't breathe after eating it and I was having stomach pains. But still, for some reason, I just kept eating and eating and eating and I could not stop. I keep losing my train of thought because that's what happens when I... 10 minutes and ad number five. I ramble. I feel like there's never any structure to these types of videos because I just feel like I go on and on and on. But sometimes that's just how I kind of get my point across and express like my true feelings regarding the subject and kind of like what I've went through and what I am going through. I no, you're kind of saying a lot of words to distract us from what people are calling you out on. You are you say a lot to say nothing at all. I think one of the most satisfying feelings for me during a planned binge is anticipating the binge like back before you know the virus started happening when i was at a grocery store and i was choosing what i was going to binge on that was such a fun and wonderful feeling to me and i was so excited to just stuff my face silly later because when i say that i feel possessed when I binge, it is a whole stride of things. And once I'm at the store and I'm planning that binge, that's when the possession has started. It's not just this like, so, I mean, sometimes it is, okay? But this video, I'm strictly just trying to talk about the planned binges because if I wasn't, yes, sometimes it is a very quick, bam, you want to binge and you will do anything you can for it to happen. And it's like, you can't control it. But for a planned binge, sometimes it's not just this quick thing that you have when it's unplanned. Sometimes it's like, you're in the store and you're like, I'm gonna eat that whole thing of Dove chocolate. 
I'm gonna eat that whole Ben and Jerry's. I'm gonna get those hot Cheetos. I'm gonna get those frozen burritos. I'm going to go home and I'm going to eat every single one of those things. That is a planned binge. And, and I get that. I 100% get that. But like I said, you went through three walls. You actively had somebody take you to the store. You actively told us what you're going to do. And you did it on camera where we could all see and you knew we were all going to judge. And honey, that's, I, I mean, maybe it, maybe it's a, you know, a, a sister or a distant cousin of a binge, but that's not, that's not something that, you know, you're stuffing your face in silence. That's, I mean, if you're going to do that on camera, what do you do in private? And you knew it was going to be a hard day for you. Okay, there's there's a fourth wall. We're breaking the fourth wall. That's a fourth wall. You knew it was going to be a hard day for you. So why didn't you reach out to somebody and say, hey, look, th this is this is a tough time for me. This is Mother's Day, and I didn't really have the best ma in the world. Can Can I talk to somebody? Can I cry to somebody? It's okay to cry. It's okay to get in your feelings every now and again and just, you know, let it out. Let that release happen. Don't try to quell it. Don't try to numb it. And, I mean, I did say three walls, but you had to break through four four walls to do what you did. I, like I said, I can come halfway with, you know, saying I'm going to the store. Because I do that at work. I'm like, man, it's been a tough day. You know, none of my customers would answer me. I, I had a fight with one of my coworkers that I really like. That's my pal. I'm, I'm going to make myself feel better. I'm going to get some brownies. I, I like brownies. And, you know, all I need is, you know, brownies and a good cup of tea and, you know, a good couple of, you know, mind-numbing movies to help me quell the day. Yeah, I 100% I get that. But I'm not going to, you know, go and get those brownies and then go online and say, look, guys, look at these brownies I got that I'm going to binge on later while watching my TV and then knowing, you know, it was a bad day and a hard day and <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do it and where nobody can see me, nobody can bother me. And I'm the most comfortable. I'm the most comfortable when I'm alone mowing down on those brownies. <laughs> I get that. I just, I would not feel comfortable and satisfied telling somebody, look at the brownies I got. And then go into town on them on camera. I mean, you didn't really eat the candy on camera, but you showed us the full wrapper and then you showed us the empty wrapper. But, you did, you know, you did eat the pasta and stuff like that. So I, I can't see that as a planned binge. And a lot of people do do that. And the only reason why I know this, and I'm not trying to speak for other people, is because I talk to you guys. We are a community and I am so freaking glad that I have opened up about this, which I opened up about this years ago, because I have met so many people who relate and understand. I have met people who have healed and they've gone to treatment and they have talked to me about it. I've met people who literally share the same story as I do. I have met people who just started binge eating. I have met so many types of people, no, not in person, but online and I will forever be grateful for you guys because if it wasn't for you guys, I would feel crazy. I would feel absolutely crazy because I see all these comments. Ad number six. You're not a binge eater. You're such a liar. You don't plan binges. These are people who don't know their information fully and I understand that. And by seeing those comments, it's like people start to make me question, who am I as a person? Do I know what I'm talking about? Duh, of course I do, because this is my story. This but you're letting us in on your story. It's like somebody writing a novel and setting it out there for everybody to publish. And then you see the reviews start coming in on your novel about people that either liked it or hated it. And you know, I read a novel a long time ago. I couldn't get it because it was made for a younger audience than me. And I was, you know, in in my late twenties and I couldn't grasp, you know, how these things happen. They wanted to make a real story, but yet they made unreal situations for kids to be in. So I, you know, it's, I now left a bad review on it saying, you know, this, I may not have been the target audience, but I didn't really like this story because this, you're putting your story out there 
And these are the Amazon reviews that you're getting now. Okay, if you don't want people to give you feedback, if you don't want people to judge you, don't put your story out there. You know, don't let them in. Don't overshare. And I'm, I mean, I'm coming at you as a sister. You know, I'm a big girl too. I'm, I'm morbidly obese, super morbidly obese. I get it. I may not be, you know, to your size, but I get it. I've been there. I've been at the arcade on the dance pad, you know, having it up. And some guy comes up to me and says, man, you move pretty good for a big girl. And then he, I seen his face like, oh, oh shoot. I, I made my outside words sound bad. I should have kept that inside. And I mean, I was like, it's okay. Yeah, I, I am what I am. You know, <laughs> I like cheesecake. I like cheeseburgers. I get it. I'm a big girl, but I, I I'm not going to overshare. I'm not going to show you what I'm eating. I'm not going to, I may take a sip of coffee every now and then because I am a coffee addict and I got to have my coffee straight up. I can't put cream and sugar or else I'll feel lethargic. I got to have my coffee straight up, but you know, that's, that's an addiction. I may have somebody come up to me and say, you know, coffee, that caffeine, that's a lot of caffeine you're putting in your body. You're increasing your heart rate. And as big as you are, your heart rate shouldn't be that high. And I know what I'm doing. And if somebody comes to me and tells me that, yeah, I know. But I'm not going to try to justify why I'm drinking coffee. I could say, you know, I'm tired. I didn't sleep really good. I need a kickstart. And, and you shouldn't come after me because I need this coffee to get my job done. I know what I'm doing. Do I want to make myself better? Yes. But until I actively take those steps and start making myself better you know I have no right to argue with anybody that's you know giving me feedback yeah there are some vicious people out there I'm gonna say yeah they're vicious people and some people are just giving you heartfelt criticism trying to help you and you put up a wall you overshare then you put up a wall this is my journey and I know exactly how it feels to be not in control of your body when you are binging. My binges are painful. They are not cute. I I literally have different types of binges. Sometimes my binges are where I will eat until I am sick and I'll still keep eating. There are times where I binge where for some reason I can't get full. That fullness will not happen and I just keep eating and eating and eating and eating until I try to reach that. And when I binge, I know the difference between binging versus overeating because I'm a food addict or binging versus I'm eating in large quantities because I'm a food addict. Because when I binge, I eat faster, I get sick, I am not there and I'm not thinking clearly. Those are my binges. Afterwards, I feel guilt. I feel disgusting. Okay, you just said during your binges, you're not thinking clearly, but yet you just clearly, actively, in full control of yourself, showed us on camera. Okay, you said you're not in control of yourself, but yet in full control of yourself, actively holding a camera saying, this is what I'm going to binge on. I'm going to do it. I mean... I, I I think people would respect you more for saying, "Hey, this is an I don't care day. I'm I'm just gonna eat what I want to eat. This is not a binge. This is a me day. This is a cheat day." Um, but I I mean I I wish you would have reached out to somebody. Like I I don't like to keep bringing up other reaction channels, but like I said, I think Zachary Michael genuinely heartfelt loves you. And I think, you know, if you reached out to him, as you have before in the past, and asked him questions, he does answer and he does care. I mean, like I said, I think if you straighten up and would fly right, he would get a plane ticket to Kentucky and give you the biggest Zachary Michael hug he could. He's He just seems that genuine of a person. And it's so much more food versus my overeating aspect. And while I'm eating, both of those things feel differently. 
binging versus overeating versus overindulgence. Those are all different because I do all of those things. And I will always overeat. I'll forever overeat. What I'm trying to conquer is the binging and it's hard and it's scary and I feel out of control a lot of the time. And it's just like, it's a mess because the mixture of like being a food addict with it, I think that's what really just gets me because it's like, it's almost like the food addict in me also loves the high of the binge. You know, it's so, it's twisted. It is so twisted and I hate myself for it, but I have to realize that this is not my fault. And I need everyone who is watching me who has an eating disorder, no matter what type, it is not your fault. And don't let anyone ever invalidate you, ever. Because you know what you are going through. You are the only one who knows. No one else, okay? And I know sometimes you try to explain it, you try to open up to people and people don't take you seriously. I completely understand that too. Because people who do not understand eating disorders will not understand eating disorders. They just won't get it. And I also want to say that there could be three binge eaters in a room and y'all could binge eat differently. Y'all could feel differently while doing it. Everyone has a different story. Not everyone is going to be completely the same, but I think that's what's <clears throat> what I'm grateful for is that there are people I have met from having such a huge audience that are similar to me. But there are also people who have completely different stories to me, but we're able to bond through that because we know how each other feels. It's just that feeling of being not in control. And it's, it's terrifying. It is I'm in complete control. When I overeat, I'm in complete control. I know what I'm doing when I'm sitting down at the bowling alley and ordering my favorite burger and rosemary fries. I know it tastes good. I like it. And I don't really consider myself a binge eater maybe a food addict yeah because I know what tastes good but you know there and maybe, maybe yeah I do you know I have a binge here and there but like I say I do it when I think it's been a hard day and I got to give me a treat maybe that's what I think it is I'm, I'm trying to make me feel better by like I said giving myself the brownies and <laughs> hear my dog walking around yeah, she's on the hardwood floor and she's she's not liking it, but I want to give me a treat. I want to give me, you know, something to look forward to at the end of a bad day. And maybe that is a binge. I'm, I'm not sure, but I still know what I'm doing. I'm still in control. I can bypass that store very easily on the way home and say, no, no, I'm just, I'm just going to, you know, watch my show or read my favorite book or... <laughs> I I feel like I know what I'm doing, so I don't really think I could count that as a binge. But, you know, like you say, you weren't in control, but you had to take four steps to do what you did. You had to take four, you had to break four walls, like I said before, to do what you did. And you had to have some form of control to break through those four walls. It is terrifying. Like, when people say, you can control it. I don't know what planet you're from. I really, truly don't. But sometimes you can't control it. <laughs> sometimes you cannot control it. And it's not because I'm fat. It's not because I love food. Because more than anything, I think I hate food more than I love food. This isn't about... No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. The way you do the mukbangs and your eyes roll back in your head um, whenever you eat something of that euphoric, yeah. And maybe it's not just the food that gives you that feeling of endorphins. Like I said in the last video, it's buying something. Buying something from Target or TJ Maxx or Marshalls, having the new pretty shiny thing. And 30 minutes to an hour after you get home, the it's not as pretty and not as shiny. It's like when you order something from Amazon, you get that anticipation of your package arriving and you're like, yes, my package is coming and it's coming. It's on its way. It's in my town. It's, it's out for delivery. It's coming. And you get that package. You rip open that brown box 
and you take out the wrapped pretty shiny thing. Maybe it's an electronic and, and it's so glossy and it smells so good. But after maybe a day of having that new electronic, it's just like, eh, it's there. It's, it's another thing. Yeah, I, I did want it. Maybe I still do want it. it. It's something you are addicted to those feelings of endorphins. I get it. I, I love getting things. I love stuff. I like having stuff, but I understand stuff can't love me back. Yeah, I, I loved getting my new headset so I can hear out of both ears. I enjoyed getting, you know, my wood plaques that are still sitting there blank that I'm hoping to start up doing some wood burning again. I am getting a new microphone. It's going to be out for delivery tomorrow. It's new. It's pretty. It's shiny. I want to touch the shiny. And it's that feeling of euphoric of I'm getting something. And, you know, food's quick, cheap, and easy. And, you know, when you eat it, it's gone and you don't have it cluttering up space. I get it. I think that's what you're addicted to is the getting things, buying things, acquiring things. And it may have stemmed from your life in the children's home in, you know, the foster care system. You may not have had a lot of things to call your own. And that's what it is. You enjoy having stuff and space to call your own now. And I really feel for you. And it's, it, I mean, yeah, you need stuff. You need stuff to make you happy and maybe not genuine happiness, but, you know, it, it's nice to have, you know, a TV you can watch and a computer you can surf the Internet with. It, it's nice. It's fun. But just understand stuff can't love you back and things can't love you back. And I know you, I know you like food. You like the food because we all see you when you take a bite and your eyes roll back in your head and. And you yell at that rotisserie chicken like, why are you so good? So, yeah, you yeah, love food. I love food. Oh, the taste of food. Duh. A lot of it tastes good. But it's not about that. It's, it's so much deeper. And it's so much more than you guys could ever even comprehend. By the way, I'm not a psychologist. I'm just going off what I feel. Unless you struggle with it. And I'll, I know I'll continue to have people say, you don't have a binge eating disorder, you don't binge, you don't this, you don't that, and that's okay. You're not in my room when I do it, and you're not in my head when I do it. You're not there afterwards when I cry, and you're not there during it when I look like an actual pig. So, that's that. And I don't want to offend anyone, I'm just saying for me, I feel like a disgusting pig when I do it. But that's me and myself. It's kind of like one of those situations where your skinny friend is like, oh my god, I'm so fat, but then... You look at them and you're like, no, you're not. So what do you think of me then? A lot of the times. That's body dysmorphia. There are some skinny people who do, you know, see the ounces of fat they have. But, you know, they look at a larger person and they see the beautiful curves like a work of art. But yet they don't see the curves on themselves. They see themselves as fat. That's body dysmorphia. It's not that they see themselves as fat and then see you as fatter. It's, you know that that is another thing body dysmorphia it can also make bigger people think they're smaller than what they are it can make smaller people think seem bigger than what they are you are your own worst enemy and my skinny friend who thinks they're fat they don't look at me like i'm a fat person they look at me as amber lynn you know it's like everyone is their own worst enemy true, i don't look at true. other people who binge eat like fat pigs i look at me like that because i am my own worst enemy I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. Um, it's just like you could have too big of a nose and you hate yourself for it. But then you look at someone else. They have a big nose, but you don't look at them for their big nose. You look at them. True. And think they're beautiful. True. 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 You, know, you got it. Like, you got it, girl. Sometimes you can never just be fully happy with who you are. And you're, you're always you're always critiquing yourself. And. That's a whole other subject for a completely different day, you guys. But I just wanted to explain that more. And I feel like I'm going to forget a lot of what I really, truly want to say in this video. But I just wanted to get that out. People need to stop telling me, you have this, you don't have that. You have this, but you do have that. That's not up for you. That's not up to you. <laughs> you don't have my blood work. You don't see me in real life. You don't know anything. Like, I'm not trying to be rude. But that's not up to you. You're not my doctor. You're not my therapist. You're not my psychiatrist. You're not my nurse. You're not my dentist. You're not anything. You just watch me and you watch what I choose to show you. And I don't show you everything. 
So anyways, I am going to end this video. Hope you guys enjoyed and maybe understand just a little bit better, but I feel like you don't because this was mainly me rambling. But anyways, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Okay, I that was a lot to take in. And I think what you're trying to do, honey, I think you're trying to do damage control. You've shown a lot of what you are. And like I kept saying over and over again, you had to actively break down four walls to do what you did. And, you know, like I said, number one, you had to actively get someone to take you to the store or you had to add it to your Instacart on your phone or on the computer. You showed us what you acquired for the said binge. So that's another wall. You ate it on camera or showed us what you were about to eat and then showed us the remains of what was left over. And the fourth and final wall was you knew this was going to be a hard day for you. And it's, it's just hard to justify that as a binge when, you know, binges, you want to do it to make you feel better. And I don't think you're completely comfortable doing it on camera and telling us what you're going to do and doing it while knowing it's a bad day. And I mean, like I said, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a therapist, but I am a big girl too. And I, I, I know food makes me feel better. There is nothing better then, you know, like I said, eating a brownie or eating cookies or eating chips and drinking my hot tea and watching the fun shows and making me feel better after a bad day. And I don't think I am unhappy with myself. I'm pretty happy with myself. I, I love my job. I love, you know, what I do in my life. I love everything I choose to do. I love my volunteer work. I love my ice skating. I love my dances. I love my ducks. <laughs> I, I love everything about my life. I love the people I interact with, but I feel like my life could be better enhanced if I were of a healthier size and, you know, and my body was healthy. You can be skinny and be unhealthy and, I, just, I feel like my, my life could be even better enhanced. So I'm pretty happy with myself. I'm pretty happy with who I am. I'm pretty happy with the people I hang around with. I'm pretty happy with my days. My days seem fulfilling. But I feel like I could better be enhanced. And yeah, I get it. You know, you have a bad day. You have a rough day. And you want to make you feel better. But I feel like when you binge, you want to do it in silence. And, and you want to be comfortable with it to make yourself feel better and I just feel like you doing it on camera just didn't do anything to make yourself feel more comfortable reach out please reach out there are so many people who do love you and there are so many people who want to see you succeed I do like I've said many times before I want you to come back at a healthy size at a healthy weight at a healthy body snapping your fingers and I want you to rub it in our faces and say, you didn't think I could do it. I did it. Look at me now. Please do that. Please show us up. Please take care of yourself, honey. And reach out to us. Have a good weekend.